Well, hello there, sunshine and skis. Mm -mm -mm. Hell yes. Better than this. Except more of this. That's what we call freedom. Amazing. Oh, look, it's Ali. Hey, hey there, Ali. I love this spot. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so, what do we have in the day bag? Well, since it's a athletic endeavor, I've just got soft shell on and not a lot of layers. So the day bag contains extra worms. It contains a pair of Dachstein mitts. It contains some gaiters, just here. A wax kit. A sacket, which is basically a, um, a space blanket with a uh, candle, which we've looked at before. Snow brush. Head torch, because of always. Uh, sunglasses, which I'm wearing. An additional neck gaiter. Some other gloves. Uh, satellite comms. My half skins for these skis, first aid kit, something to eat. A um, thermos can, of course, something to sit on, but it's also handy to uh, put your stuff down. And then I've got a, uh, an additional hat and um, jacket, puffy jacket that I'm wearing now. All that fits perfectly into this little bag. So if anything were to happen to me, I could easily stay out overnight. And yet the thing is tidally, totally tiny and very suited to uh, athletic endeavours of the enduring kind. That's the idea. So, just because you're going out and being athletic doesn't mean you don't have to be safe. And just because you want to be safe doesn't mean that it, everything has to be heavy. So, that's the idea. But Bushcraft Girl, you're skiing on the Loipa. Tell me why you brought gators. Well, Ali, the thing about gators, it's about worms. Why would you sacrifice fit and control on your boots for worms if you don't have to? By wearing lots of extra socks inside your boots or having to get very, very warm boots that you then can't wear in cooler, in uh, sort of not quite as cold conditions. Why wouldn't you take the boots that actually fit 
and keep the close contact and the damp inside that boot and put the insulation around the outside where A, it doesn't interfere with your control, B, you don't have to have lots of different pairs of boots, C, you don't compress the insulation with your feet and D, you make the insulation much less damp because the shoe will collect the, the damp mostly inside the shoe will be contained. So, and you can do all sorts of gaiters. You can have this kind of gaiter, if it's a bit colder, Loden gaiter over, that covers the top of your foot. Then you can put even a, a Yeti gaiter on or a, an ordinary snow gaiter like this. You can put insulation inside that. Uh, in, on very high mountains, you have a thing called a Yeti gaiter, which is kind of an overboot. Those also come in insulated versions. I mean, the bikers, mountain bikers, and those guys have figured this out ages ago because they need to have shoes that are pretty tight, especially road cyclists, and they just use neoprene overshoes. So, to me, it makes sense. I don't know. Does it make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you for that explanation. And as it happens, you're wearing some also. Yes, I am. Yes, so you put the camera on those and show the people that you already sussed this out. Ta-da! <laughs> yep, it's just a matter of practicality. So, be practical. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Ali. Now then, <laughs> let's see you go ski over there. Okay. And then we'll uh, we'll carry on and uh, see what other adventures we can do today. Okay. Okay. This is what a proper winter adventuress looks like. She's got her uh, cruising skis that fit in the loipa and can also be used off the loipa. She's got a small backpack with a hot drink, a soft shell, and all that stuff. And she can easily go 14 kilometers or so, 14, 15, with a 12 kilo pack. She did that a couple of years ago already. So today is just a nice little bit of day tripping. Yep. And tomorrow, going up there, behind there. Nice overnighter with my buddy Sep. Yep, looking forward to that, buddy. It's gonna be awesome, awesome. I've got some uh, some gourmet coffee, some nice whiskey. I've got some nice uh, sausage made from a young steer, spackle, and for dinner, soft boiled eggs in avocado wrapped in bacon on the campfire. Sound good to you? Because it sounds good to me. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So this kind of uh, day tripping between Loipe and a bit of powder and maybe a bit of steeper stuff, that's exactly what these uh, cruising skis are for. So they have steel edges, but as you can see, they've got plenty of camber. They fit, so they've got, you know, a spring, they have a crown, so they have uh, fish scales. They fit in the loipe, and yet they're wide enough to give you flotation uh, in powder. Come with all kinds of different bindings. Just love them. Got several kinds of skis like these. Uh, these ones are basically the fast, long ones. They belong to my husband. But uh, I purloined them for today, and I just love them. Great. Just great. You can go a long, long way. On a get up like this, you've seen me before with these, uh, you know, with a little ultralight backpack on. You know, you can do overnighters, and then basically you're just limited by how much food you're willing to carry. And in the winter, you need to carry about a kilo and a half a day per person for food. So that just determines how long you want to stay out. And I tell you what, when you get out here, you want to stay out long because it is awesome. Just awesome. Here, a little river, our Yachen. Over there in the sun. Beautiful, awesome day. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just wonderful. <laughs> See, float. Then you float. But great for kick and glide because of the camber. A little bit tricky to turn 
uh, going downhill, but then you're pretty limited anyway by the soft boots and stuff. So you just have to be a bit more cautious. So you just, you know, you pick the tool for the job. If you're going to do a lot more downhill than you take your ski and boot setup, it's more for that. But this is just wonderful. Look at this. What's not to like? Awesome. Look at this powder field here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a nice feeling because these skis are tuned enough and this is where the fit thing comes in again. I've got enough toe feel on the skis with these great boots. I can feel the individual snow crystals sliding past the tips of the skis and it is a brilliant feeling. I mentally and sort of sensorially extend my toes into the tips of my skis like feelers or tentacles or whiskers. Like feelers, yeah. And uh, yep, just reach out on this awesome snow. It's a, it's a powder base and then it was warm for a few days and then there was more powder. And then it's basically got surface hoar on it now because it's been uh, just around freezing. And it is brilliant. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snow. Marvelous. I'm totally looking forward to tomorrow, I can tell you that. Day and a half up there with the overnighter man. Poo in this. I think you're going to hear a lot of squeaking from me. <laughs> I think you're going to see me smiling quite a bit tomorrow. Yes. All the way up there. In that area over there is where I'm going to be at the back. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Look at these awesome, awesome, awesome little hoar frost crystals here to ski on. Beautiful. Feels nice, sounds nice. What did you say, Ali? You are sensorily? I am sensorily addicted to skiing on hoar frost crystals when I can because I love the texture and the sound. Hi, I'm Allison and I'm an addict. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, so am I. So, that's all good. Man! Dang! Why not ski the pow? Indeed. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> Whee! Hello, Ali. Hello. Is it a nice day out today? It's a beautiful day out. <laughs> yep, it's so beautiful it makes you giddy. Truly it does. It's good for the soul. Yep, that's where I'm going up tomorrow. Right to the back of that bowl there. And uh, let me see if we can zoom in on the bit. Yep. Yep, back into there. That's the bottom of the Benedictine Band which we know quite well. And there's a little bowl just underneath the head wall there, which is completely awesome. So that's where we're going. Hopefully, tomorrow. Of course, conditions have to be right and we have to be fit enough, but that's is the plan. Now, the plan is to do a bit of loping through the pow. Here we go, let's see, yep. Yeah, loping. It's a bit like running, but through powder. And it's really nice. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <sighs> Love it. Yeah. 
sure do. Sure do love it a lot. In Dutch there's a word for it called verrukkelijk. Verrukkelijk. So this is verrukkelijk. So I want to show you uh, these Madhus Intelli Grip skins here. They fit on any uh, cross country ski and they basically are a little climbing skin. Fits right over the crown here. Also, you can use it when you would otherwise use clister and you don't feel like it. So these just uh, roll up into a little thing and they're darn useful. Okay, so how to stay safe with ultralight gear. Um, obviously you're going to have a sacket with you, which is this kind of uh, space blanket. And uh, here I've just turned it into a poncho. Of course, if you had another space blanket, you could make a skirt, wrap it around yourself here, make a cowl, put it over your head, maybe even cut it up and use it to make some over mitts if it's wet. So it's always worth having two space blankets with you. Also, you might tear or lose one. Then I've got Dachstein mitts, obviously mega warm over my ordinary mitts. My buff, which I can use as a face guard. And my sunglasses that have a little uh, insert in it that makes them w uh, windproof. So I'm just going to take these layers off. And you'll see that with not a lot of gear, you can still actually make yourself very, very uh, windproof. So the poncho, then I have actually got it tied because I keep the sacket, uh, the Staying Live Cold Kit, I actually attach some strings to it so that I can use it as a tarp, but also so that I can wrap it around myself if I'm not going to actually have a, a backpack or maybe I've lost my backpack. In any case, strings on the sacket, um, all in all, you can make yourself a nice little shelter with it, but mainly it's for use as an emergency uh, warming tent or poncho. So if something bad is happening, you get your little handle, one or more, you get your poncho on like this, sit on your backpack, like that, you light your little candle in here. And you just punch her down, and within about mm, 10 minutes or so, 10 minutes or so, in here will be warm, probably about plus 30. So that's the sacket. So you take that off. I've got the gaiters, like we talked before about. These ones are very, very light and very fast to put on. We have my um, Swiss wool uh, puffy, but any puffy will do. The point though with puffies is to put them on out over the top of what you already had on so as to not disrupt the, the warmth and the microclimate that you already had inside. So the puffy, that comes off. Now I'm back into my pretty much ordinary touring clothing except for this awesome hat. Very warm, very cheap hat. It's like 15 euros or so. Just open all this up here, get all this stuff off because it's actually far too warm in there. Woo! Woo! It's almost like a space helmet, this thing. And you'll see here that the, the, the glasses have an insert here that makes them windproof. Of course, I have my uh, little headband on. And then in here, it's just uh, an underlayer and a, uh, and a mid layer. So, with a very little tiny sack, 
you can have complete protection and even overnight survival um, without really having to carry very much stuff with you. The other thing that I bring with me, quite important, is find them in here. The other thing I, uh, I do bring with me are uh, chains for my boots because if I'm on any kind of incline and I do have to actually, uh, I, if I can't ski it because it's too icy, likelihood is that it's going to be also too icy for the boots. Yes. So if I'm going to be on an incline, likelihood is that it's going to be too icy for these boots as well. And then I'll put these uh, little snow chains on. They don't weigh very much. They just come on like that. Little grippers. And they secure across the top like this. And with that, you have total control, even on uh, on water ice. Um, essential, really. Especially if you're going to spend a lot of time skiing on uh, forest tracks and things like that. So, that's all the stuff I take with me. Um, thermos flask and stuff like that. But, uh, really, there's no excuse for getting hurt out there because you were not smart enough to bring worms. <laughs>